Hey everyone, my name is Angela Fazio and you're watching Moms in Real Estate. Today's guest is Gina Bennett and we'll hear today how she was able to overcome the obstacles of insecurity and hardships and how she's making this beautiful life for her and her two daughters through real estate. Um, it's a compelling story, so I know you're going to love it, so let's get started. Angela Fazio is an industry powerhouse who has overseen 40,000 homes sold and $9 billion in production. And Kristen Cantrell is one of the nation's most accomplished team leaders, helping thousands of agents build their businesses. They are passionate about educating, encouraging, and empowering moms in real estate. Our next episode starts now. Hello. Hello, ladies. Hi, Kristen, my beautiful co-host. And welcome, Gina. We're Hi. so excited to talk to you today. I'm excited as well. Good. Well, let's just let everyone know a little bit about yourself. Uh, give us a little background. Okay. Well, I'm Gina Bennett. I work at Conway Real Estate. I have been full-time for 18 months in real estate. Um, I've had my license for six years. I have two girls. Uh, one is 17 and one is 12. Awesome. So we're so excited for you to share your life with the people who are watching because it is such a great story of overcoming obstacles and insecurity. And, and let's, like, let's just get started. We all have that. If any woman out there says they're a hundred percent confident, they are a dirty little liar. <laughs> I agree. So tell us a little bit about like your first daughter, Kristen, you're going to have to talk. I'm lagging again. Oh, you are. Okay. Well, Gina, kind of maybe just take us down the road of like, you know, your past and then how you decided to get your license and why it went from six years. You know, you took a while to actually um, go in full time. And I love the story around that. So kind of just walk us through all that. Okay. So my past, um, I will start. I grew up in New Mexico. I moved to Arizona when I graduated high school by myself at 16. Um, I didn't have the best mother and daughter relationship. So I left as soon as I could. And I, I moved here after I graduated. I went straight to a dental school and I uh, started working. I think I was getting ready to turn 18. So when I was 17, I already had started working in a dental office. Um, I did have my first daughter. I was pregnant at 19. I had her at 20. And um, you know, we didn't, her father and I, we didn't really have a, a great relationship. We tried, we were going to get married. It just, it wasn't you know, we were best friends and we were young and that wasn't really on our path. Uh, so um, it was just my daughter and I. And um, a few years later, I had gotten engaged and my fiance had lived in California. Uh, we were going to move there. I was going to take Kaylee with me, which is my daughter's name. And um, I was going to go to hygiene school there and live our life and move on. <laughs> I tried to do that. Her uh, father's family had uh, served me with um, asking for joint custody. The state of Arizona is a father state. Mm -hmm. I still moved. I figured he hadn't raised her, known her for five years. There's no way I'm losing my daughter. Um, we left. I spent a year in, in court battles. We were back every weekend, back and forth, back and forth. And his parents actually were very well known in the real estate business uh, back then. That was when the market was doing amazing. His, both of his parents were realtors. And um, anyway, long story short, I was told that I was losing custody of her if I remained in the state of California. So we spent the summer there and we moved back to Arizona. I got custody back of her. At that point, we already had gotten married. And then I was pregnant with my second daughter. Um, my pregnancies are horrible. I probably wasn't even supposed to be able to have kids. So if I had waited any longer, I wouldn't be able to have had kids. So those are those are God's uh, gifts, absolutely for me. Um, stayed in dental career. My about a couple of years later, my husband had an affair, and my mother died one month before that. While we were in the middle of a fight, so my world sort of collapsed within like fourteen months, um, very badly. And I, he, you know, during that time I wasn't working. He wanted me to stay at home with my youngest daughter. So I was still in the dental field, but um, I wasn't working at that time. Um, I had moved out, started on my own. I didn't ask for $1. I was actually approved for a very low income residency. Um, I didn't end up taking that. I had borrowed some money from a friend and um, got an apartment and just built myself back up in my career. 
I got a job uh, as an office manager for a dentist who, phenomenal dentist, but over a seven year span was very abusive to me, uh, verbally very, very abusive. And from my history with my mother, my husband, and a lot of different things, I had stayed because I never felt that I was good enough. You know, his dentistry was amazing and he was great with patient care. Uh, but I didn't believe in myself. So I stayed and I thought that it was okay. I was still making great money and it was what I was supposed to be doing. Um, I think there's a lot of people that kind of stay in a job because like your situation, you know, you're, you're a single mom and what else are you going to do? And you kind of just accept that that is your life. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's crazy. How did you ever pull yourself out of that? Um, well, I had at that point, I had been now in dental for 12, 13 years and real estate was something that I always wanted to try. I had seen it work for so many people. I love the human contact, the sales. I, I, I really pride myself on that, but I was always super scared of the math. Honestly, on the test, I was scared that I was never going to be able to pass. I know all I could hear in my head was you're not smart enough. You can't do it. Who's going to work with you when there's all these agents that are successful? Like, what are you compared to them? So I never, I never took the test. Um, finally, I was changing offices in dental and I had a gap and I, I just did the crash course. I did the three week program, went to school every day. I passed it and I got my license. Then I was like, awesome. I got it. Well, you're still not smart enough to use it. You're still not better than anybody else. So you just keep that in your back pocket and pretend that you're a realtor. <laughs> so I went, I stayed in dental and I had paid, you know, every year my, my dues and I had renewed my license twice. And I was like, you haven't even touched the damn thing. Like yeah. you gotta try. So I, well, I had hung in at Keller Williams during that time and I did a few open houses, but I just didn't have like that hands on. It was very corporate. I didn't have anybody holding my hand, just kind of teaching me the steps, the ropes, and giving me that confidence that I needed. Um, after that, I decided to leave Keller Williams when I started to understand that there's different fees with different brokerages and different opportunities. I looked for something smaller and I, I used it the same way as I did in dental. I didn't like the corporate jobs. I liked the one-on-one -on -one dentist, you know, it was just a small practice. So I went with Conway Real Estate in Gilbert where I live and, um, I had been there again a year and we were, we were in Facebook, Facebook groups and before pandemic, everybody was doing things monthly and meetings and all this kind of stuff. And I would just look and still be like, oh, wow, I could be friends with them. Oh, no, you're still not good enough. You can't go. You know, I still talked myself out of it, even though I was a part of it. And they were very welcoming. And a year later, fast forward, um, there was a party bus that our broker had reserved to take us to a haunted house and it was like drink on the bus go to the haunted house get to know everybody have fun so i was like okay i love haunted houses this is my sign we're doing it i'm not renewing my license again and not trying so i go on the bus and a couple of drinks now i'm all, oh i love everyone you know like, <laughs> That's her. her name was adrienne adrienne lynch and um i was telling her that i was scared and you know, and she was like, there's something wrong with the situation. You're going to meet me tomorrow. And the rest is history. I joined the team with her and that was in November. And by uh, March, the next year I was full time and I doubled my income in dental in six months. And now I've tripled everything just through a pandemic. So that is, that is such a great story. And the reason why I like that story is because I think there are so many people. I was very, 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 very insecure until I was like in my late 20s. And yeah. it's crippling. It's yeah. crippling. And I know there are so many people who say, you know, I think I could make real estate something for myself. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Kristen and I and you are too are passionate about this industry. And especially as women, I want to surround myself with really powerful overcome, overcoming women, because when you overcome obstacles like that, God sh does a strength work in you. And yeah. that, is a, that is something that can be applied to every situation for the rest of your life. So although I'm sorry you went through all of that, I really believe that God uses situations. I know he did in my life so oh, yeah. that as a strengthening for me so that I won't ever let myself get back there. 
Oh yeah, I'm a firm believer in God. I also go to Bible college once a week so that I can get a, a degree in ministry because I do want to write a book and I wanted the biblical background to be able to talk. And um, it is my faith. I I know that he put the right people in the right spots at the right time, my age yeah. of maturity, um, just starting to believe and accept myself. And I couldn't have done that six years in, in the beginning in real estate. I wasn't ready. I wasn't mature enough in my own being and God really worked in every avenue. And it's, it brings my, like my voice is getting cracky, like just to tears to see his steps. I mean, he, just like even meeting this, like this is all, it's his timing. And I just, I love it. I'm excited. I love that. So it's I perfect. also, I think that it's so, so good for people to hear because I, it's a common thing I hear when people get into real estate, they're like, well, there's so many agents. Why would anyone choose me? Mm -hmm. Um, and there's certain degrees of that. Obviously, you were feeling it on the extreme end, but I do think that you, you like you have to understand that it's okay that there's a lot of people, there's a lot of business to be had, and to yeah. that you are worth it. And so I'm so glad you were able to see that. I'm so glad Adrian, who was also on Moms in Real Estate, I'm so glad you got to meet her, and she was like everything for you to get you to dive into real estate. Yeah. I think I think the best piece of advice that women should listen to at people in general, but we, our audience is women. So mm -hmm. is you have got to go out of your way mm -hmm. to make sure that you are surrounded by people who are like-minded, who yeah. are your cheerleaders, who will be transparent with you, who will push you according to the way you want to be pushed. I, there is no substitute for those people surrounding you and strengthening you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's so true. So um, tell us, you had said something about when you were talking about advice that you give to women who maybe were in your situation or hesitant or feeling like they can't do it or they're not good enough. You know, you had said something about, you know, when you want something so much that you feel in your veins or something like that. What were you talking about? Yeah. I mean, I'm very like in tune with my being. I feel like I could feel the crave of it in my veins. Like I, I knew that this job was destined for me. I just had to break a few barriers to get there. And it's okay that it took me six years because again, I'm ready and I give it my 100%. I'm a constant learner, but I think whatever it is that you're passionate about, if it's something that you keep, you know, going back and forth in your mind, you, you have to go for it. I mean, the most uncomfortable things you know on the other side are the most beautiful things. And mm -hmm. every book you read, every biblical scripture, I mean, that's all it talks about is just, you know, we're, we're put up against these trials. And when I know that there's something large and crazy and scary going on in my life, I know that that's when I buckle down and my faith is strongest because on the other side, I'm about to see things happen for me that I didn't even dream of. And, and that's how I feel with, you know, even in real estate this year. So this would be my first full year. Then we get this pandemic and I was like, wait a minute, I'm in sales and I have to sell homes and people are losing houses and jobs. Wait, how does this work? So I, I freaked out for like a week and I was like, okay, I can't be calling people. You know, there's like this world crisis right now. I can't ask, do you want to buy a house? You know, I couldn't go door knocking. I couldn't go to networking anymore. Like I had to shift everything and I got really scared a little bit. And then I had to regroup and remember that just one year ago, I did the exact same thing. I had to be considerate to people's needs and understand that instead of maybe selling or calling, asking, I needed to ask how they were and just be a friend, be an ear, be like that mental stability. And so that worked well. That's, that's my natural nature is very compassionate. So I didn't have to fake that, you know, and I think that's the difference too. Um, one piece of advice that Adrian told me in the beginning is don't compare yourself to other agents. Everybody has a different goal. Um, yeah. If some people only want to sell five houses a year and they're happy and they're comfortable, some people want to exceed who, you know, 15, 20, 30 and keep climbing. Like everybody's different. And if you're passionate about it, the people will believe you. And I, I think that this job is, it has to come natural. Like, from the being your being you don't you don't just get into this business to make money well, you you have to have to people. People can, yeah people can definitely tell when you're not authentic and yes yep. authentic. Not. <laughs> yeah. when i yeah. sit down with agents and they're like um they i you know we talk about what what's motivating you in this business or what's important to you in your life and and you know all of that that conversation yeah. that's really important to me because i like to know what drives people mm -hmm. and then they're like i just want money 
you know, right. or it's, this is just transactional. Mm -hmm. I was like, you are not for me. <laughs> you know, I want to work with people who have that. I don't have the same qualities. I'm not as compassionate as you are. But I am passionate about bringing value. <laughs> you know, I'm not yeah. compassionate, but I am passionate about bringing value to people. And I know that people can smell a fake a mile away. Yeah. I can. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So yeah. what else is your book going to be about? Yeah. Okay. My book is going to be a testimony of my crazy life. <laughs> um, just, you know, the my, my childhood, where it put me mentally and emotionally, and then just all the steps that I've gone through, you know, having my kids young, being divorced early and young, um, an affair, my mother dying, and my job transition, the the boss that I worked for in dental that, you know, he actually threatened my life. Um, that was the day that I walked out the door. I mean, there's a lot to me. And I just feel that the message is, you know, a long time ago when I was young, God always put on my heart that I'm going to save hearts. I'm going to, and I'm going to take care of people. And I feel like I've been put in all these different situations so that I can, I can be a resource to people. And that's what I really want to do. And in real estate, I, I really love the connection between people. I've become friends with these clients and I've been really blessed that just in this short time, um, I've been given so many referrals and people are my friends now. And we go to dinner after our, our deals and I go visit their houses and they send me pictures of photos. And I'm so new that I can't imagine what that's going to look like in five or 10 years. You know, I, I amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so rewarding. It is. It is. It's my favorite part. So. And for everyone wondering too, like, you know, you've only been at it a year and a half. Um, what did you do to get your, your clients in the beginning? Um, I just did dials. I mean, I joined the team right when I started and I like, I like calling people. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was leads and I just called every day, all day. And that's all I did. And um, I didn't have any other networks at that time. You know, um, I did join Gilbert Leadership last year, I just graduated this June. And I put myself in, in different uh, community, you know, I started volunteering in places and then I'm in that Bible college. So I, I active in my church, just a little bit everywhere. I sort of injected myself all over. Um, I do coach my youngest daughter's uh, soccer team at GYSA, which I just re-signed up again. So that will be <laughs> this fall. Um, just try to put myself out there, be in front of people. That's natural for me. I love meeting people and, um, now, everywhere I go, I try to bring up, you know, conversation in Ubers. I just got a listing for an Uber driver the other day. I was like, that's awesome. I can help you. <laughs> that's so awesome. So do you, like, now that you're a year and a half in, are you still cold calling? I am. Um, I mean, I guess it's not cold calling. They've they've um, reached out to us on one of our ads or our website. They've clicked, so I'm just following up with the people. So I'm still doing that. Um, I enjoy that, especially with the pandemic right now. Things are back to being different. We can't really get out there and be around so many people. So, um, and I, I still, I actually do like dials, but I, yeah, I mean, I'm still doing it. Yeah. So you had said um, that your 17 year old daughter, that she's an entrepreneur as well. What does she do? So she is very business oriented. Probably I got inspiration from her a few years ago. <laughs> So she um, uh, does, it's called the Good Bar. So they make like lipstick or she makes lipsticks, lip glosses, scrubs, and it's all like natural material, natural boxed and good for your skin, good for your lips, good for the environment. And right now she is in the process of creating, it's called the Gilbert Girl Gang. And it is going to be yeah. entrepreneurs all over the United States. And I think it's like four or five girls and I don't know too much about it, so I don't want to say it wrong. She'll probably hear me since she's in school in the kitchen. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but that is the Gilbert Girl Gang, and then she has the Good Bar, which is hers that she's been working on for. So I think she was like fifteen. That and, is so cool. Mm -hmm. I, I have to buy products from her. Hmm? Buy products from her. Okay. So I've got to tell you, that's got to be so gratifying to see your daughter. Um, be an entrepreneur. You know what that made that would make me do? It would make me want to work harder. I know. Oh yeah. Because I'd be like, wait a minute. <laughs> I know. Seventeen, and I need I need to up my game, which is why I love to surround myself with people who are really going after it. 
so that I have my game. So that must be so cool that your daughter is the person that can inspire you too. Oh yeah. You know, um, over summer because, and she also is in college and high school. She got a grant a year ago. So she's doing her junior and senior year while she's in college. I mean, high school and taking college classes. So she's been busy doing everything she wants to be done. And she wants to go into business and own businesses. That's all she wants to do. So over summer, because we were out of school, you know, in March with the, the virus, I was like, you can't just work on your business all day. And she's like, do you know that no other parent would tell their kid that they can't work on their business? And I was like, oh, because in my mind, I'm like, you're just on your phone. You know, I was like, I want you to get a job. I want you to just utilize some other time. And she was like, wow, I can make more money in one hour from my business than I could go for working for somebody else. And I was like, okay, well, you're still going to go work for somebody else for a couple of hours and learn the skills because she hadn't really had a job yet. I'm like, you need to have that. And then you can look at it and realize you never want to do that for a living. That's okay. That's right. So she's working at a monastery school and uh, just part time in the afternoons. But she's like, I'm done now. I'm done working for people. I'm not doing this. So it's neat. It's neat to watch her. She's so young and she already believes in her business and herself. I mean, I'm still working on it. I'm 36. You know, I, I love that. She inspires me daily to, to see that drive. Well, thanks to God and thanks to what he put you through that you could raise strong daughters. It's yeah. Yeah, that is a gift. That's that awesome. So I know that just hearing your story and seeing how I don't know. I'm proud of you. I just think it's a spectacular story and it inspires me. So I'm so grateful that you shared that with us. And I know that people are going to be blessed when they hear. Good. I'm glad. I hope I help other women. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you are watching this, I don't care when you're watching this or listening to this, if you do not have people around you that are building you up, that are helping you, that aren't are encouraging you. If you don't have really great cheerleaders around you, you need to call Kristen, me, Gina. We need to get around you. You need to get around us and we will lift you up. So um, any last words from anybody? No, I appreciate the both of you. And I hope that this touches someone that, that needs it today. Uh, yes, I do too. I know that God never puts his word out there. It doesn't come back void. And we have done that. So God bless <laughs> all of you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, beautiful Kristen and Gina. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.